Thank you very much and welcome. Um, I am Julian Smith. I am a cardiothoracic surgeon. I work at Monash Medical Centre where I'm the head of the Department of Cardiothoracic Surgery and I'm also a uh, professor of surgery uh, here at Monash uh, in the Southern Clinical School. So therefore I can describe myself as an academic cardiothoracic surgeon. My day consists of uh, clinical cardiothoracic surgery, teaching medical students and uh, surgical trainees, conducting uh, cardiothoracic research and administering a department of surgery and a cardiothoracic department of a large teaching hospital. I'm also on the council of the Royal Australasian College of Surgeons, so I'm involved in the organisation of surgery in Australia, and I'm also uh, past president of the Australian and New Zealand Society of Cardiothoracic Surgery. So I've got a fair bit to do uh, in a given day. I began my journey at the University of Melbourne and uh, graduated uh, just about at the top of the class in 1981. <laughs> I had a passion for surgery from a young age, but I had no idea which specialty I wanted to pursue. I came to the decision of cardiothoracic surgery by elimination. During my intern and postgraduate years, I made sure I was exposed to all the surgical specialties. I was particularly interested in neurosurgery and paediatric surgery for a while. I couldn't stand the neurosurgeons or some of the conditions they had to manage, so I excluded them. And I had difficulty dealing with a lot of parents in paediatrics, so I eliminated that. <laughs> I was interested in vascular and also in, um, in cardiac, but I also had a passion for cardiology and respiratory medicine. So I thought a surgical uh, career that deals with cardiac and respiratory problems would be uh, outstanding. I then uh, trained in uh, Melbourne and then spent time uh, at Stanford University and at Cambridge University gaining additional experience, especially in the area of heart and lung transplantation. I did a master's in um, uh, heart transplantation and that was my uh, subspecialty interest. I uh, wrote a thesis and multiple publications and was involved in pioneering work in artificial heart technology at the Alfred Hospital at Stanford and at Cambridge. It was, and still is for me, a, an extremely rewarding and very exciting specialty. Many of you will hear that cardiac surgery is dead and that the cardiologists are taking over all our work. That is completely false. We spend our time cleaning up all the problems that we have. <laughs> <laughs> uh, and if you look at the evidence in the literature, the cardiac surgery offers, offers the best outcome for patients with triple vessel coronary disease and especially if they're diabetics. And that's a huge component of our population. The other facet of my work is the treatment of uh, lung disorders, particularly cancer of the lung and diseases of the pleural space. And in an ageing population, these conditions are not going away. Some of my colleagues do just pure lung surgery, others do pure cardiac surgery. I mix both areas. Other important subspecialty areas in our field are paediatric cardiac surgery and also transplantation. They are considered super specialty areas and require extra, extra training. One of the questions asked, are surgeons physicians who operate? And I very much consider myself a cardiologist or a respiratory physician who operates. I reckon I can go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the cardiologists in managing and uh, handling the vast majority of uh, cardiac uh, conditions. They don't like me saying that, but uh, I always tell my colleagues we have to out-physician the physicians. And then once we do that, we can provide um, excellent uh, care. We do cure patients. Um, we're not just palliating uh, people. I think we are in a very technically demanding specialty, but a highly rewarding one. You take patients with advanced heart failure or severe uh, respiratory uh, distress, and you can turn their lives around uh, completely. They are the most grateful uh, patients that um, 
one can deal with. In, in reference to my gastroenterological colleague, there's no shit about the diaphragm. <laughs> <laughs> that is very valuable. <laughs> we, we, might be, we might be in a risky specialty where patients can often die after surgery, but the vast majority of our patients do exceedingly well. We have stellar cardiothoracic surgeons here at Monash, and I encourage you to spend time in our departments, no matter which hospital you're at, and I'm sure you'll have a very rewarding time. Okay, you guys have got a question for Julian, which is, with the development of endoscopic and robotic surgery, how helpful would playing video games be <laughs> improving your surgical skills? Interesting you should ask that. There is evidence in the literature that um, those uh, people who are experts at uh, video games uh, grasp uh, lap especially laparoscopic and thoracoscopic techniques uh, in an enhanced fashion. So if you aspire to a surgical career and a lot of surgery, in many specialties is endoscopic or laparoscopic and um, video assisted. So looking at those monitors and playing those games is a very useful prelude to a <laughs> So get going. <laughs> All right. Physicians now have the option to ask Julian a question themselves. Uh, Julian. With the improvement in robotics that's coming along in surgery, you know, in 10 years' time, aren't we going to outsource all of this to cutting surgical work, working in Mumbai or somewhere doing it remotely? <laughs> <laughs> well, the, the, that, has been, um, that has been applied. Uh, Bruce may be able to enlighten us, but uh, a cholecystectomy has been uh, performed in the United States with robotic um, assistance from Germany. Um, so it's, uh, it's not as silly as it sounds. Uh, it's interesting, robotic technology may not be the absolute answer. Um, in our specialty, uh, robotic um, coronary artery bypass and mitral valve surgery took off and everybody bought a robot at $3 million and then once, once the cost and effectiveness were looked at and other simpler techniques uh, pursued, the robot in cardiac surgery is less and less uh, prevalent. And it is still, we still use minimally invasive techniques, but the, uh, it's much more simple than using a robot. The robot is popular in urology, in uh, radical prostatectomy. However, the uh, jury is still out as to whether it's effective. Bruce, robots? Uh, yeah, I'm a coloproctologist. You'll hear about uh, what I do a bit later on. Excuse me, you're not allowed to speak. <laughs> Michelle is now going to represent her, give you her story. Oh. 